Hello YouTube, my name is Patrick and this machine here is a uh, Digital Alpha personal workstation 500 AU it's a RISC machine, 64-bit it's a uh, stock, it's 500 MHz this has been upgraded by me to a 600 so we're gonna power it on and take a look at it the boot will take some time, it's pretty slow I'll skip the memory test, it takes forever. This machine is currently running Windows NT 4.0 for Alpha. It's capable of running a variety of systems from Windows to Linux to different Unix fla flavors. Uh, I have a hard drive, a SCSI drive with uh, Gentle Linux on it, but uh, I decided to try the Windows for simplicity. It's, uh, had some stability issues with Junto the last few years. Uh, I have, have owned this machine since 2006 and it was running headless, so as a server basically. But I never really got it to work out as a, uh, as a workstation in Linux, it had some issues there. So here we are in Windows NT 4.0. Uh, Windows is still 32 bit, but the CPU is actually running in 64 bit mode uh, anyway. It's basically using half the register length, as far as I can understand. But that still means that it's capable of using, I think, a maximum of like 2 or 8 terabytes of RAM or something in theory. The machine doesn't fit that much, obviously. So. Here we can see 786 megabytes of RAM. The CPU is at 21164, which also is the same as an EV56. I think this EV56 came out in 95 or 96 something. The EV5 came, was running at the Digital Labs uh, back in 93 at 300 megahertz already then. So. This 500 megahertz machine is dated from 99 manufacturing date, but that's pretty late. It's uh, it's basically obsolete back in 99. They were Alpha actually hit one year first before anyone else, as far as I know. And uh, AMD licensed the system bus from the EV6 that is the 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 CPU after this one uh, from Digital. So the, the, the Atalons actually has some things in common with this CPU. And it, uh, we have here... Uh, the operating system itself is running natively alpha code or alpha instruction set. But we have this uh, x86 program here, it's called FX32. So it can actually emulate 32-bit uh, x86 programs. There are a couple of things I would like to do with this machine. It's, uh, I would like to change the graphics card, which is a pretty cool card, but it's kind of useless at the same time. We have a PowerStorm 4D51T. It's uh, 
technically it's a 32 meg card, it has 16 megabytes dedicated frame buffer. Uh, so that will handle your like your image you can see the resolutions is up to 1280 by 1024 32 bit colors and then it has an optional texture cache of memory it can, it can you can get it without it so 7 megabytes so you can have 4 or 16 optional and this is the full 16 so that means 32 total use, usable memory there's one thing here with you can see true color is 32 bit I can only select that because the card can only do 32 bit so it has the opposite problem that than most PCs had back then where the graphics card might not support the resolution and colors you wanted up, up the scale this thing doesn't go down which means some programs complain and that's an issue I really don't like uh, this is kind of like this is just a 3D accelerator so it can run uh, open GL stuff here is one of my demos I wrote myself this is actually a a model of the CPU and actual pictures taken off it and modeled and rendered in OpenGL. Uh, it's not optimized very well though, so it's a bit sluggish. Uh, gonna have to rewrite some of stuff. There's another demo. So I think it's like five times the polygons, but it's more optimized, so it doesn't run that bad. So, yeah, and uh, let's see here. Let's find a game. To remember where I put stuff. So let's find a video. Yeah, here's a video about, about the Alpha CPU by Digital back in, I think, 94 or something. Or 95. The computer actually has a built-in speaker similar to like the Mac has in the front. As you can see, if I go full screen, it stutters like crazy. And that's the graphics card. It's, it can't keep, it can't refresh the pixels fast enough. So would like to solve that with a graph is switch by switching out the graphics card but there are only a few cards that actually work under Windows NT. If you run Linux you can run Avoodoo 3, you can run IE Force 2 MX, you can run IE Force FX. It will actually post with most not all but most uh, PCI cards from, from a PC. So it has this VGA BIOS from X86 emulation built in. So I actually posted this thing with the uh, a Trox G400 and a Voodoo 3 3000 PCI. The problem is there's no drivers for any of those cards for Windows. So it actually has, in Linux, it has pretty good uh, graphics performance with uh, the G400. It probably would have even better with like an ATI 9000 or an FX 5000 series card or something. It would be really nice. <coughs> Try Doom. This is actually a Doom port for uh, Alpha here. This runs in uh, 6 4 by 480 but it's actually. Oh, I forgot the MT, stupid. It's uh, actually upscale 320 by 240. And why is the same as for 
as for with the video the port card PR boom here can take the money so I have this, I think it's this one I have this uh, no draw because the, the card doesn't seem to support any kind of direct draw in Windows so to be able to set like resolution stuff properly I need to disable that so you can see here the height and width is set to 320 by 228 and no full screen and this M2 is basically scaled up in pixel 2 by 2 so if we run it as it is that's still the same resolution as before So I can't use full screen because of direct draw, which is annoying. So now, now we're going to run native 800 by 600. And you can already see how slow it is. It's not nice at all. I think we can bring up the CPU here in the task menu here. And you can see the CPU is working, but it's nowhere near. Or something just waiting for the graphics card to push out the pixels. So I want to fix this for that. I have another graphics card that works in Alpha, uh, Windows NT for Alpha. Another thing I also want to fix is the onboard, it has an onboard integrated network card, and that thing has been a pain in my butt. It stops, it loses connection. It's flaky and it's slow, so I have a 3Com card for that because it's one of the cards that, that, where I can find drivers for Alpha, NT for Alpha. So we have a 3Com, 100 megabit uh, card, and 905 I think it is. And then we have a Permedia 2 graphics card, which is very similar in performance to the one we have now, but it should support 256 colors, 65,000 colors. 16 bit and 32 bit color, so 16.7 million colors. Should support direct draw, so we should be able to do full screen in most things. We should, be, we should have some nice uh, fill rate, uh, actually, so we don't get the stuttering. Should hopefully work for media. And it's an 8 megabyte card total, so the resolution will be, will be limited a little bit, but 1280 by 1024 isn't that useful. I think it's running that now, I'm not sure. Settings. Yeah, it's running now. But it's not that useful. It's a little bit hard to read stuff. So, I'm gonna shut it down and take it apart. And upgrade it and downgrade it and then now we look at it. Let's open it up. Get this thing apart, it's quite easy actually. And we have two levers up here. There's we can pull and then we can pull out the whole, whole motherboard, the upper half of it. That's actually two halves. And the front here. You can see it here, that's the duct and fan for the CPU cooler. And back here we have a case fan. These are replacements I made, the original ones were in plastic and they had deteriorated to the point where they were just falling out in small pieces. So here we have the original graphics card for this machine. Motherboard is out, 
and uh, over here I have the VRM module for the CPU, CPU cooler, and an interesting thing here, the CPU cooler is bolted directly to the CPU, to, to, bol to, to nuts here, on two bolts on the actual CPU IHA, I, IHS. We have a couple of new caps, I replaced them a couple of years ago, uh, due to how this was stored for a while, those caps they really don't like cold, so the o-rings went bad, I suspected, so I had to replace those. Over here we have a L3 cache module, it's external, 4 megabytes. It's supposed to be an 8 megabyte upgrade, but I never seen any. As far as I could read from the uh, marketing, it was supposed to be a, a later upgrade option, so it was no systems were shipped with it as far as I know. Uh, the CPU itself can take up to 64 megabyte, but this board is limited to 8, and in practice 4 is probably the highest you can go. Over here we have SD RAM, it's ECC or ECC reg, you can't mix but you can run one or the other. It's uh, it's running at 66 megahertz, so like your Pentium 2 or the Pentium 2, but they run in pairs, so you actually 128 bit bus, so you can. It's quite comparable to what you could see in their dual channel today. So the uh, bandwidth is about one gigabyte per second, or equivalent of uh, PC 133 on a Pentium 3. The actual CPU is also 128 bit bus, 66 megahertz on this particular model and motherboard and I'm not gonna remove the heatsink but since I did do a CPU upgrade I do have a CPU here so this is an EV56 Alpha CPU so like I said it's a risk based CPU it's 64 bit it has uh, 92k or a 96k of L2 cache internally. It's uh, I think it's about 9.6 million transistors. It has I think 32 general pur purpose registers. It's a quad issue design, so it's uh, four instructions per clock, so similar to a Core 2 Duo, something like that. And an instruction window of about 80 instructions, and a Core 2 Duo is about 96. And the EV56 is a slightly beefed up EV5 and they were running back in 1993 so this is this was probably considered the, the perfect architecture back in its day now with ARM uh, ARM64 and RISC 5 and things like that popping up like the, the new go-to for efficiency but back then this was if you wanted the highest clock the highest IPC the most floating point performance. This thing at 500 megahertz when I benchmarked it equals in the, in Super Pi. It was an old program you can get for multiple architectures and compare. Uh, but it's gone. Uh, the the server is down and I haven't been able to find copies. But this thing at 500 uh, would match a Atlon or Pentium 3 at 1 gigahertz in floating points. And it's slightly weak, I think, in integer years at uh, the same clocks. But remember this thing, you could probably get these things about twice the clock frequency of anything Intel in the head at time, which meant you were always faster. So, and with the emulation, obviously in Windows NT, we were able to run some x86 software at decent speed still. So this is uh, a PGA, pin grid array, it's the socket motherboard uses and the CPU is socket, uh, socket 499 so it's very similar in size and looks of uh, socket A which is 462 pins so yeah and you can see here the bolt sticking up on the gold plated IHS this chip is I think around around 50 watts so it's very similar in power draw to an early Pentium 4 like a William at 1.5 or something One thing I like to do though, that I didn't mention before, I actually got my hands on some uh, additional uh, ECC memory, ECC only, it's, 
I'm not impossible to find ECC memory, but ECC only no no buffers, no registers. So I found these in a Mac. These are PC100, and that's the highest we can go because of the SPD profile in SDRAM. Uh, PC133 will contain a hundred and a hundred and three profile and uh, PC100 will us usually contain a hundred and a 66 megahertz profile so this uses 66 megahertz so we need to use at the most PC100 so I think this should work and like I said they come in pair so if I recall these two smaller ones here are actually the biggest modules they are they were upgraded when I bought the machine I got uh, those in the package so these four here are regionals so I think we're gonna swap two of these out for uh, for an upgrade here should yield us about 896 megabytes of memory I think this thing can go all the way up to one and a half gig of memory so So it's a small upgrade and it's not even necessary for Windows MT, it uses like less than 10% usually of what we have here. And in itself doesn't use much. So I will put the motherboard back in the system and we'll move on with upgrades. This is the graphics card in the, that was in the system. It's a intense 3D Intergraph card. It's also called MS, MST440. The problem is with these cards when trying to find drivers is they seem to go under three different names. So yeah, digital seems to have their own name. So we can see some memory at the back here. And there are three chips here, obviously. A chip here, 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 you can see through the PCB. So over here, as far as I can tell, it's an IBM made ship, probably the RAM deck. It's very good picture quality on this thing. Uh, digital ship here. I think this is a PCI bridge. So there's a reason for that because over here, if you turn it around and zoom in, you can see here that we have our series logic CLGD5440. So pretty standard VSA ship and the reason for that is this is actually like two cards in one when you when this card initially posts uh, in your system it runs off the, off the series chipset and when you install the drivers in Windows NT Windows NT can only use one, one VGA adapter and it will then use the chips over here I would suspect which are capable of 2D and 3D so this basically gets disabled it's only for during the install so you can actually disable it with the jumper because you've got two ports here and they're not two outputs it's very similar to a Voodoo 2 you have output here but you get input here the idea is if this onboard one somehow collides with your uh, integrated one if your system has one this this card is like sp special to the alpha machine but you can then disable the ship use a pass-through cable from your motherboard to this so you get initial video until you install the drivers then it will switch over so there should be a ship here probably one of these somewhere that handles what what gets the output so, so to speak might be this little one here I'm not sure but anyway, so it basically took card in one, and even more weirdly, this connector here is kind of like your SLI connector for a, like a Voodoo 2. You can run two of these in pair. Uh, but as far as I understand, you need a monitor for each. I think it's uh, more for syncing things up. So it's uh, probably a bit limited. And uh, I looked at eBay and I think it was like 120 euros for one of these. And with the problems one had, I don't want to. Also over here we have the upgrade module 
for the uh, texture memory. So that's 16 megabytes. Now I think I think the card was around 2,400 euro, euro dollars somewhere around when it was new, and this was another thousand or so euros or dollars. So pretty expensive piece of kit from '96. I think this is oh, and it's probably '97. So like I said, this system was made in 99 from the stamps on the motherboard and case, but uh, the hardware is like 96, 97. So it was not top of the line. It was used at the university in Gothenburg, so I think they probably either got a good deal or they got a really bad one, I don't know. <laughs> Hopefully they didn't pay too much. So that's the old graphics card. So this is the graphics card I want to put in. It's a lot smaller. It's very very similar in performance. It's a Permedia 2, which was used for like used by Editech when they developed Quake 2. Uh, I think this card and the other one I showed is around 13 FPS in Quake 2, so that's a one and a three. So very poor, but at the time was probably considered good enough. I don't know. <laughs> the standards today are a bit high. So this is an eight megabyte card. The advantages with this card, like I said, is it should support direct draw, has similar 3D performance, it supports all bit depths of color, so 8, 16, 24, 32. So I expect this to perform the same or better, despite being, well, smaller. It's the same vintage 97, I think. It's slower than I would have one, though. But like driver system, real big problem here to get something to work. The next thing I want to put in is this uh, 3Com card. Parall parallel tasking 2. It says 3C905B uh, TX. It's a pretty standard 3Com card. It has driver support, so it should work. And hopefully it will resolve my slight issues with uh, the network dropping out. On the integrated one, the integrated one is uh, I don't remember the chipset, but this one of those really, really, really bad ones. Just just put it that way. So this should be a nice upgrade, and so. So only thing left to do is mount it. So let's put the graphics card in here. I'll use the same slot as the other one. I think that was the original placement too. It's a little bit finicky sometimes on the placement. I notice when I ran Linux, the stuff didn't really want to work if you put it in a place it didn't like. So we have a Fire Gale 1000 Pro. Let's see here. You can actually enter the bias meter. 896 megahertz of RAM, F2 setup, 600 CPU. Yeah. So, so far our upgrades have worked. So, those RAM sticks seem to have a chance to be good. They worked in a machine I took them out of, so I don't think they're broken or anything. Just want to enter BIOS here first. So this is the BIOS. This thing actually has two BIOSes. This has this Alpha BIOS. And this machine has two BIOSes. It has this Alpha BIOS. You can see on the top, Alpha BIOS setup. It's meant for Windows NT. Then it has a different firmware that can boot uh, Linux, Unix, and uh, similar systems. So. Don't remember exactly what the name is, but this you, the console is called SRM, if I recall. So it's it's a you have a blue console, basically. I can set it up to boot that, but uh, I'm not gonna do that now. But it has two firmwares basically, so you can switch between them depending on what kind of operating system you're running. So right now we're running this other BIOS. It's very very PC like. Uh, so you can see system configuration. The mod model here is 600A. Uh, the, the A is for the Windows only machine. This is, is an AU, so the AU in, implies it has two firmwares. Uh, so six, it's upgraded to 600. 
four megabytes of cache, which is the L3, 896 megs of RAM now. And we can see the Alpha BIOS version is 5.07. Uh, this thing runs a SCSI disk, an 18 GB one. I had the, uh, the original, original were like a 4.8, and you couldn't be in the same house as the computer, no matter how many walls you had, it was some noise. So I've been using a 73 gig and now an 18 gig because I there's just not enough software to put on it for NT to use more. So here you can see our devices. Memory here. Bank 0, Frank 12, 256 per DIM. And then 256, 128, so that adds up. Integrated stuff. Yeah. Alpha bias upgrade and use a hard disk setup. Yeah. You set up your hard drive and so in here. Uh, date and time. Network. Insta install and send You actually set up your drive and start install it from here. And you use the same kind of CD you would for ordinary PC and x86. If you, if you have a proper, proper CD, it will contain the binaries for the alpha and for power PC so Windows NT ran on multiple architectures back in the day so that's how you set that up from here it was selection set up here we can see, here is my Windows NT it's on a partition tree, it was Win NT40 it was loaded at EXE, it's the last partition, it's the boot partition so like I have Windows and then I have one for my stuff and then the third one is for booting. So yeah. And we can see the X86 BIOS emulation. It's mentioned here. Arc multi boot. So I think Arc is stuck for a word actually. And I think somewhere in here you can switch the firmware. So I've done it before once. So let's put it up again. And now we're going to have to download and install the drivers, so I put them on my FTT here, on the lab computer. Hopefully it boots now with this card in, since I have the old drivers. I had never swapped a card on an alpha with NT running. So we'll see what it does. Well, that's good sign at least. Some graphics here. Administrator. Mm -hmm. Stupid simple code. Mm. Mm. Let's see, I need a piece of software to download FTP, FTP Explorer. And this is actually running in x86 emulation. I didn't find any good uh, FTP program. This is not perfect, this software, but it's uh, good enough. So, somewhere I put the folder alpha. Drivers. Let's see, we have put these now. Now I'm being stupid. The network usually works for a little while before it stops working, so I'm not too bothered. And you sometimes on my network here, I can set it to 10 megabit and it seems to work, but when I had it on another network, that didn't even work, so that's why I'm tired of messing with this onboard network partner. So I'm gonna start with the graphics so I actually get some proper video here. Mm -hmm. Should be that one. Let's not use that. That's a native software I use, but let's do this extract. This is WinRock running in uh, x86 emulation. 
They're actually pretty fast, so I actually prefer to use it over native software. So now we have our drivers, x86. These 3D Labs drivers are actually both x86 and alpha, so it will check what you have and install the proper files, I suppose. You can actually see it in the... Uh, so we have x86 there, but underneath here we've got the alpha, so hopefully this will work as intended. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The thing is, Windows NT 4.0 isn't plug and play. It does, you, you, you need to know where your hardware is, like your IQs and stuff for it usually, sometimes. So like when you install a sound card, you actually have to go into the sound, the control panel to sound, add a card and select the drivers and assign the IQs and stuff. It doesn't find anything by itself unless you're, when you're installing, it runs like, in like Windows Night 5, a hardware wizard that tries to find everything it can. So you actually have to know where, where your hardware is, but this is uh, also a benefit I think sometimes. You, you, you won't get annoyed by stuff that you don't want to install a driver for, or so on, when this doesn't bother you. You know what drivers you need, you know what work you use to go to the proper control panel, select it, install it, and it works next to so, let's see here. And now we the drivers. And The thing you have to do is actually install an older driver first. I think that seems like the driver is fiddling with this for updating only, it seems to be missing stuff. So, I uh, three labs still have the driver up, so I downloaded the older one, which is, seems to contain the things we need, I think. Yeah. So, so, here's the driver. I think that should uh, work, I hope. Save it. That was fast, so that was no problem there, that's nice. Close, close, yes. So now we have to reboot obviously. Looks like we have proper colors, so that's a good sign. Uh, okay, two th so now we have the colors. Two fifty six. We even have two thousand colors, which uh, is just kind of fun. Uh, let's go with two colors. Apply. And, uh, yeah, 
so we can go pretty high on resolution, but the color shouldn't work now. That should be fine. Okay. 3D Labs. Okay, so here we have it. Uh, 2D Driver Build. Okay. Uh, let's try something out. Games, quake 2. That's quake 1. That's brilliant. Something intriguing. This one, if I recall. Games, quake 2. Seems like this I've actually never used one of these Promedia cards before, so I have no idea how. Well, what? I kind of know in theory what to expect, but in practice, I have no clue. So, this is 640x480. It should time them about 13 FPS, 12 to 13. I don't know why. Seems to work in uh, the old card I couldn't run in. Uh, I couldn't run the old uh, card in full screen at 320 by 240 but it actually seems to work here. I read it was a limitation of Windows MT, but if it works, I'm going to run 320 by 240 it should give me like 30 FPS or something. That will actually be playable. And Quake 2 is one of the only AAA titles I know of that actually were compiled by, I, by a company natively. I actually compiled it. I think this version is one I actually compiled myself too from the original source code. Usually if you use a slightly new compiler, you get a bit of a performance increase. I've done that to my PCs too. So let's see what we get here. I mean, this isn't any better than the old card we picked, took out. There is one card, Ford Alpha, for NT that works, that has about 30 FPS in 640x480, but the it was over 300 euros I mean they I think it was 230 pounds or something but 12 and a half so I don't know why it's a 20 k texture memory I think the I found it all but that's the performance I expect at this resolution so let's go down here I can actually run this in full screen that's nice because that didn't work before that's time doing that that's like a quarter the resolution and that runs nice enough to be playable. I mean it's not ideal to have 320 to 40 but take what I get. I actually have a lower resolution is an upgrade. Mm -hmm. Let's see how uh, 30 FPS. I mean that's that's console performance for you there. So I'm pretty sure my demo here will run like two now. Yeah. The other card was actually faster in this instant. Uh, but I can actually run full screen mode, but it's not actually real full screen, so that's a problem. Yeah. Uh, settings might actually do like that, maybe. Um, yeah. See, so it's all kind of same. Well, that improved things a lot. So. Uh, 
for something like this, you can't really tell the difference. It's perfectly fine. And how is full screen? A little laggy. Full screen is desktop resolution. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. CAS is, has separate windows for open G rendering rather than full screen. So we've tried one for the other. But for what I'm going to use it for, that's a lot better. So. Also, demo I made a bit slow this machine though. With the, it's not so much the CPU, it's just the graphics card. There's a lot of polygons on this demo. I actually struggle some. And it really likes the GeForce 256 or something. I have plenty of polygons in this one actually. Went a little bit on the board there. Yeah. Maybe we can make it run curious here. Just going down here in settings, see what works. The Familia cards are really, really crappy cards. It's a word of workstation card for any kind of distance. So that didn't help that much, I think. Uh, it still looks pretty good. I can see some dithering now with the 32,000 colors. But I rather have options. I'm not having options. Something I want to try now is obviously the video I had problems with before. And do. So let's see here. Video. That's a problem here. There's something buggy with the fast forwarding. Sometimes working, sometimes not. That's a lot better. So that's what like I showed before the problem with other card. Just for everyday kind of retro use, like basically what you would do when you're on your PC back in the day, it doesn't work too well on other card. The other card is very workstation orientated. Uh, speech. Very big detail about the EV5. Very cool. So that works, that's nice. Uh, next up, we want to fix the network. We can switch over. And adapters here. So you have to basically add an adapter. And I have this. And so we pull down. I think it's one of those stupid Windows things where you have to type the whole thing, which becomes annoying. So I'm going to have to, uh, have to unpack the drivers and put them somewhere easy to find. And if I can just extract files. Rename and then to Nick. Hold on over to this D drive. Okay. Yeah, so there that's our network card that we can 
So let's try to ping something again, and we have internet. Try out Doom again. I changed that. Well, obviously, we need to fix that. You know, we need right for all things to work properly. It's a good thing to actually do it. So, now full screen is supported. Nice. I actually play a decent pace now. That's how Doom is supposed to be played. Let's try that. Oh, that's fast. The thing is, like I said, it couldn't run full screen before, so I had to like make a window that could. It was 640 by 480 total with the window, and then uh, set the desktop to that. So basically, full the screen. I don't know what happened. But this is perfectly playable. And I could easily go 64 by 480, but Doom is supposed to be 320 by 240. So this is perfect. So I had been uh, fixing some things. Uh, the error here before was just the old drivers. And according to the manual for old drivers, there's now you install, but you know, if you remove a specific file you mentioned, that will basically notify the drivers. So they're gone here now, we have the tab for the new drivers here. So no more errors here. And there's the 8 megabyte of memory. I didn't see that before. And it also seems to have a positive effect on the on the games like Quake 2, now the video seems to work properly. And texture memory is recorded correctly, I think, here. Yeah. I think it's about half texture, yeah, and the frame of it. So, and also the, the, the color you select here affects games, affects the OpenGL software, so like games. So I find that. Uh, Going down to 65,000 colors improves performance a lot in Quake 2. Going lower doesn't help, so it says set, set to 65,000 colors now. And uh, turn on uh, Quake 2. And as you can see, this is perfectly smooth now. And we can add a time demo. This is version 3.21 uh, because I compiled it myself. And as you can see, the performance is pretty good now. Huh? 44.1 FPS, so that's pretty good. And uh, since this uh, computer is more uh, like a CPU powerhouse, a memory powerhouse, rather than a graphic powerhouse, uh, I 
use it as an excuse to, to learn the program and develop stuff. So, and like I showed before, my demos there, I have some uh, earlier. Uh, taking Q, this is like a really early demo I did. So, yeah, it's also affected by the by the video setting. I put it up now at 16.7 million colors. So yeah, this is brain drain. It's a land in Sweden that we host retro land. So. Like I said, uh, I use Microsoft Visual C++ here for development. Then source, I have a few pro projects here, like my EV56 CPU demo, uh, some other demos people have made that I tried out. Uh, compi we compiled Quake 1, then my fifth place we compiled Quake 2. Uh, oh yeah. So yeah, I, I really don't write the code here, but uh, I do uh, do import it and make a project out of it. Uh, so I can compile it. And I found, 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 uh, I found the amount of memory to help out there. I have some uh, memory bottlenecks, amount of memory. So, extra memory do help for things like this. So yeah, we're not using a lot of memory here. It's like down at the bottom right now. But when I'm compiling, I'm seeing like six, seven hundred megabytes sometimes. So it's nice to have now. So with extra upgrade here, we have like almost nine hundred megabytes of RAM. So if I can find more RAM uh, of the suitable type, I'll put it even more in. So that is my uh, Digital Alpha personal workstation, five hundred AU upgraded to a six hundred AU spec with eight hundred ninety-six megabytes of RAM, eighteen gigabytes of 10,000 RPM SCSI drive and a Permedia 2 card and a 3 card. So, yeah, thank you for watching.